sometimes you will find the most cool stuff. And this is one of those great example. It's cheap and it's absolutely retro. <laughs> Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to take a close look at this laptop bag or that was actually the first thing I was actually thinking when looking at this. I'm like hey this is a 3 euro costing bag but however looking into it I picked it up in the thrift shop. It seems to be there is even a laptop in the inside so I asked the sellers like hey is this for the bag and he told me that 3 euro he just wanted to have for this old let's say Windows Acer laptop. How freaking cool is that? Sometimes you still find these clunky big heavy devices, but this is absolutely cool if you want to play retro games. Where we do have great websites like Google Games, if you just have the Windows XP PC, you can just play those old games. And it even comes with a very nice bag. However, is this thing still worth picking up? So the laptop battery is completely dead, that's most of the problem with these devices. But it is still in very good condition. Over here it actually showcases what it is. So this is an Aspire Acer. It comes with a 15 inch display and an AMD Avalon XP 2600 plus. 512 MB DDR SD, 4GB of a hard drive and a DVD CDR combo. It also still shows, like, this is the company called Graafland Computers. That's a Dutch company that basically sold it back in the day. And it comes with the AMD Avalon, or I mentioned before, and of course Windows XP. I didn't clean it up, I just wanted to show it as I basically picked it up. And let's plug it in and let's see what we're getting. Oh yeah, it's going to be like taking forever to boot up because man, I'm not used to these old things anymore. But the power supply, I was very glad that it was still here. <laughs> also slapped a 3 euro sticker on there, makes no sense whatsoever. But just on 19 volts, 4.78 amps. So let's plug in the power supply and let's boot it up. And in the meantime, let's do a quick overview. Okay, so let's power it on. Whoa, this thing sounds like a freaking vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so this device does come with a built-in mousepad. It's a very tiny one, by the way, but we do have this interesting clickies, let's say D-pad configuration. And at the side we're finding the DVD ROM over here and it seems to be in very good working order. It's very interesting we have this in my laptop because I can install my original games like the decade version. I think it was even burned on a DVD drive so this is very convenient because older laptops don't have a DVD drive all the time. But also utilize an expansion slot so if you're going to be needing that. Over here we're finding P1 and P2, I'm guessing they're like short buttons and an on off switch and some other things like Bluetooth connectivity. So it's nice and cool that it also has here and we're also finding the LEDs for indication for the power but also in this case the hard drive. This is not a slim laptop at all. It's a quite beefy one with a huge, let's say right over here when it comes to let's say cooling overall. A built-in uh, phone connection, an RG45 for Ethernet and having an extra, let's say, input for an old-school mouse and four USB ports. Utilizing a VGA button also a serial port. I think this thing was a Firewire connection, if I'm saying it correctly, I don't know for sure at the moment. Having two jack connections, one for the microphone, headphone and, and also a wireless connectivity. Okay, another thing I was quite interested by is to see if this thing has an okay screen. Because we're this old technology LCD where it has no IPS displays where we're used to now. So there is no dead pixels whatsoever. Besides it's a little bit filthy, it's absolutely in great condition. And even the mouse pad seems to be working fine. So in here we're finding some application to be installed like Microsoft Outlook, Adware, Adobe Reader and Avast Antivirus, Voice Tracer, like what, what the heck, Voice Tracer and ZVR Player, that I have never heard of. But let's do a quick overview of let's say the software. So when it's actually booted up it is quite okay when it comes to the fast part but let's see what kind of, over here we have all kinds of Outlook stuff. So when there is actually no games, maybe on the relaxing part over here, there we have it, the old school games, backgammon, we have the old school free cell, oh yeah, Minesweeper. Okay, so let's see if we can boot it up. Let's see if we can just actually see to get this game going on. Okay, new game. 
Oh yeah. Okay, I have no idea how to actually use this. We can launch the ball like that. There we go. Oh, I just tilt the machine. <laughs> oh, let's get into this. Okay, how many players, music, instructions. I think that's going to be convenient. Okay, Z and okay. Uh, well, let's check out space for launching. Okay, let's see if we can. There we go. Pinball time. I have been playing this game for such a long time. I'm also surprised how good the audio quality is of this old, let's say, Acer laptop. But another thing I just wanted to see, let's plug some games in or install some games and see how they will run because I have been messing with some Windows XP laptops. I even created myself like a portable LAN. But the major problem I've noticed, like with really old ones, like when it comes to the AMD Athlon, not of the heat problem, but when it comes to the I say overall performance, because those newer laptops are having better screens, more compact, and overall better performance. The software that I've used so much when it comes to listening to music. But this was just the way how we're going to be actually like listening to music collecting all of our files on a PC and just, you know, just browsing the internet and listening to some music with of course some Winamp and Windows XP. Next up, HD2, one of the programs I used back in the day a lot when it comes to checking out temperatures and how the health is of your hard drive. So health status of this old drive, it's still okay. Having 4,058, let's say power on hours, and that is not a lot. So what we can actually do is leave this thing in here and just like enjoy some Windows XP gaming for quite a long time now. And I'm quite always like fascinated how good these old hard drives are. Next up, let's do a quick test and you can just do a quick test or like a very long test to check out how many errors are actually on the drive itself. I don't expect a lot because we don't have a lot of hours of, let's say, being used or this drive has been used. And <laughs> there's not a lot of information when it comes to the temperatures and everything else. So the temperature of the device is in value of 49 Celsius. It's quite hot, but yeah, take consideration an old Athlon. We're getting really hot and maybe I need to replace the thermal paste throughout. Of course, like with many years that this thing has been used. And of course, if they age the thermal paste, not having like the best conductive overall situation. So current voltages over here shows, but there is not a lot of stuff we can actually do. So where it comes to the wear level and the charge level, here we're having, of course, the wear level is 70% of the battery. Yeah, so that is actually normal with these devices. The batteries are completely dead and finding a replacement, I think it's not going to be even possible. Oh yeah, so trying to play some games on this is not going to be the best experience. Yeah, we do see a lot of glitching and this is one of the problems I'm having with these older laptops and GPUs built in. And that is why, beside making the video, I don't know if I'm actually going to be using this for my portable LAN, adding this like the fifth or sixth laptop. Because this is the general problem where these things are quite cool. You do have a lot of problems when it comes to the GPU. Maybe this in driver update or in DirectX update can be fixing some of the issues. But this is something you need to take consideration. The laptops are old and also the hardware specs are not capable of running games like Need for Speed Underground 2. And one of the things we also needed to try is some Mugen. For the people who have no idea, Mugen is actually an engine that you could download and you have all kinds of wicked stuff that we can actually use in this. However, I still need to figure out which button did I configure for this. I have no idea. <laughs> this is such a long time that I actually played it. You can see that it does have a little bit of a hiccup. So I'm getting the idea that like we still have some overall issues when it comes to, let's say, the drivers. And it's going to be a hit or miss when it comes to playing games. But Mugen was absolutely one of those cool ways to play. Yeah, when it comes to playing games, ah, there we go. I think I managed to find the keys for playing. So it's absolutely stuttering and it's absolutely a big disappointment when it comes to this. But however, it's absolutely great to see the Mugen games running on some old school laptops. The next thing we're going to be doing is installing some DirectX. Maybe this can be the problem, but you can see that it has been installed. So this is not the case when it comes to, let's say, DirectX. Hmm. 
Okay, one of the games that we need to try out is, of course, on Quake 3. Come on, this needs to be okay to be played on a device like this. But somehow it does uh, like run on 60 FPS, but it seems to be having an overall good enough experience. Ah, come on! Oh yeah, still got it. So these laptops are great for some of the older games. So when it comes to these old pieces of hardware, it's just going to be a hit or miss. However, we can actually play some Street of Rage on here. With the Street of Rage remake, one of the games I just love to play all kinds of devices, including handhelds nowadays. It does have this weird filter over it when it comes to the, let's say, scan lines. Besides that, it's also not the latest version. I think it's 5.2 if I'm saying it correctly. Does just spoil the thumb, let's just play if I can even play on the freaking keyboard. Oh, there we go. So these devices where they are like underpowered for many just many different games, we can just actually play a lot of cool games on here. Yeah. Oh. So let's shut it off and let's do a quick teardown to see actually what we can do with it when it comes to upgradability. Because there was not a problem, because we do have an age when it comes to, let's see, these devices. And why do you, yes, cancel it now, it's still open. But how does it actually work when upgrading the hard drive? Can we put an SSD in there? Because some of them don't even use SATA. They have the, like, the old ADA devices, or is it IDA? EDA? IDA it is. I was mispronouncing that. Oh. There are actually a couple of things that we can remove fairly easy. I think one of the things is the battery itself. So let's check out what battery they're using. Lithium ion battery, 4,400 milliamp. Okay, so that's the one of the compartments we can open up fairly easy. The next one is over here at the right. Okay, I'm guessing that this is the compartment for the hard drive. And oh, no, it is for the RAM modules. And it even runs on dual channel. The question remains, where is the freaking hard drive? All uh, right, so we can even remove this part over here, and this is actually where the hard drive is, and that is an interesting configuration. The golden age of the, let's say, older hard drives, and I'm very glad that this thing is still working order, because without it, I think I have an issue, one problem over here. And there's a reason, because it's absolutely, like, slept into, like, this very narrow space. So what I can maybe do, some of them have, like, these converters for the also connection that will be converted to, let's say, a flash card, and combined with that 64 gigabytes or something, we have enough to enjoy yourself the old school, let's say, games, and just install and have, like, an overall better experience when it comes to the speed where this thing is not super fast already shown you the health of the hard drive so i can still leave it in maybe reformat like put in different windows os on it and i mean particularly the latest version and do that in the future but is it something i can use in my windows xp len not really where this gigantic beast is absolutely a piece of history i love old tech However, when it comes to playing games, I think we're rather off better having an old, let's say, dual core, maybe Pentium 4 laptop that can play all kinds of old school games. In the ground too, Red Alert, Quake 3, you name it. This thing is quite limited when it comes to the gaming. Maybe with a little bit of a driver update left or right, we can change that out, but I've been messing out with it and couldn't get any better results. However, it's absolutely a blast to the past. Thank you all for watching and joining me on this Windows XP laptop adventure for only three freaking euro. And it would be great to see you in the next video. Does it come? No. Yeah, there we go. Come on. I want the music. Man, this takes forever. <laughs>